Hi everyone and welcome to this new tutorial. Sometimes we find it really difficult to write a research paper because we don't know where to start. So today we're going to discuss a few ways to trigger innovation in research. You can also watch our videos on influential research advisors from TED Talks. Please find the link in the description. Let's go. Before talking about innovation, I'd like to say a word about plagiarism and ethics. We all know control C, control V, right? I mean, we use it on a daily basis. However, when it comes to research, this is not good practice. In fact, after submitting your manuscript to a journal, if the similarity index is superior or equal to 10%, your manuscript will immediately be rejected. There are software like Turnitin that can help you check the amount of plagiarism in your manuscript. If you want to use other people's work, you should properly rephrase and cite the original article. I'd recommend you checking out this link from the University of Indiana. They offer amazing courses and free certification on plagiarism. That said, let's move on. Innovation usually stems from the will to make a positive impact on others' lives. Today, we'll see three different ways to innovate. Specifically, we'll talk about the curiosity-driven research, the observation-based innovation, and existing research-based innovation. A well-known example of curiosity-driven research is the case of Isaac Newton. I mean, the guy could have just eaten the apple, right? But in this case, the combination of unexpected and bold guess has produced a powerful law. This law is still used extensively today in many different fields, such as aviation or astronomy. There are many other examples of this type. For instance, Daniel Hale Williams, the precursor of open heart surgery, Garrett Morgan, the inventor of traffic signals, or Percy Julian, a pioneer in the field of synthetic chemistry. Now let's see an example of observation-based innovation. This example is based on this paper, prediction model of TBM disc cutaway during tunneling in heterogeneous ground. Normally, to build a tunnel, a machine like this is needed. It is called tunnel boring machine or TBM. Specifically, it's this face of the machine that's responsible for the excavation, as you can see, it has plenty of disc cutter on it. So while on the construction site, the author of the paper I mentioned above noticed that the disc cutters were prone to severe damage during the construction process. So later on, to better understand this phenomenon, they built a numeric model and carried out some simulations. Yet based on the result of their simulations, they were able to propose a powerful prediction model for disc cutter, which is now widely used in civil engineering. Finally, let's see how to innovate using exciting research. In this case, there are two different approaches. You can simply use the combination problem method, problem method. What it means is that you can use a new method to solve a new problem or you can use a new method to solve an old problem. By doing that, it's possible to innovate. Another combination is to use an old method to solve an old problem. Usually what people do is that they'll take an old method of mathematics to solve an old problem of chemistry, for example. I don't know if you get the idea. Then we have a second approach, which is the meaningful superposition of two different methods. Drawing by example, let's consider the optimization problem in machine learning. In simple terms, optimization is the process of finding an optimum or a near optimum solution to a problem. For example, what should be the best angle for a selfie? This question can be regarded as an optimization problem. Many methods have been developed to solve this sort of problem, such as particle swarm optimization, PSO, or simulated annealing, SA, which both present some advantages and disadvantages. This state of play has triggered the interest of this paper. 
that conducted a seminal study for merging the two methods together and they obtained a new method which is PSO-SA. As you can see here, the PSO-SA actually outperforms the existing methods, especially in terms of convergence. The illustration on this slide are all from this paper. You can download it for more detail on the PSO-SA optimization approach. So that's all for today. Please let us know what you think in the comments and remember to subscribe for more videos to come. Thank you.